What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Now Tad was a band who showed a lot of potential and had created a lot of momentum for themselves earlier in their career. They toured with the likes of Nirvana and Soundgarden and following their formation in 1988, they were one of the first bands to sign with Seattle indie label Sub Pop. But despite all this, they were just hit by a string of bad luck that torpedoed their career. This is their story. Now Tad's sound was more reminiscent of bands like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden from the Pacific Northwest. And like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, the group's influences lean more heavily on metal and hard rock than a lot of their other Seattle contemporaries who were mostly influenced by punk rock. Tad was formed by Tad Doyle, who was a vocalist and guitarist, who recruited other local musicians including Kurt Danielson to play bass and drummer Steve Wide who'd play in another well-known Seattle band named Skinyard. Now while MTV latched onto a lot of bands who came out of Seattle in the early 90s, Tad sadly wasn't one of them. In 1990, the band released their video for the song Wood Goblins, which was found off their second release Salt Lick and God's Balls. But MTV refused to air it because as the network put it, it was too ugly. The band also got no respect from MTV's field reporters, as exemplified in the book Everybody Loves Our Town, The Oral History of Grunge. Now in the early 90s, MTV had come to Seattle to do a special report on the blossoming music scene, and one of the publicists who worked for Sub Pop took MTV news reporter Tabitha Soren to a local club where Tad was playing. In the book, the publicist recalled how Tabitha Soren only wanted to meet musicians who looked like, as she put it, cute boys like Chris Cornell, and when Soren met Tad, she was completely disgusted by them. Now the band's bad luck continued with their third release, Eight Way Santa, that was marred by not one, but two lawsuits that stalled all of the band's growing momentum. The original cover of the album was a photo of a half-naked couple a friend of the band had actually purchased at a thrift store. The woman on the front cover was now a Christian singer, and she had spotted the cover in an issue of Spin Magazine and sued the band. The band and the label were forced to pay the woman and pull their records off shelves and reissue new artwork that was much more toned down, a simple photo of the band. The other problem the band ran into was for their single Jack Pepsi. The band's label Sub Pop had literally no money and wanted to court controversy by trying to bait soft drink maker Pepsi into threatening them with a lawsuit. The artwork for the single used the Pepsi logo with the word Pepsi replaced with Tad and well, the plan would backfire when a disgruntled ex-employee at the label gave Pepsi a heads up and the soft drink makers sued the band and their label once again. Now, Eight Way Santa was expected to be the band's big break but sadly, the lawsuits and litigation stalled what could have been a big year for the group. And despite these setbacks, the band did eventually get signed to a major label in 1992 when Tad signed with Warner Music Group. Tad would reveal how labels would actually scout bands in Seattle saying, more often than not, they were looking for a look. You know, flannel, disenfranchised teenager, hair down over the face, disconnected and disjointed from society, having interesting takes on social situations, probably more than anything he'd conclude. Now, Tad's major label debut came in the form of 1993's Inhaler, which was well received by critics, but it wasn't a big seller. It was during this time that Tad would open for Soundgarden on their Super Unknown tour in 1994. But unfortunately for the group, Tad's label would panic after seeing a promotional poster for Inhaler on the Soundgarden tour, which showed President Bill Clinton smoking a joint with the caption reading, It's heavy shit. Now, Tad would claim the record label he used it as an excuse to drop the band, and the band themselves claimed they had nothing to do with the poster, instead pointing the finger at one of the promotional or art people from the label who came up with the concept. Now the band's string of bad luck didn't end there. While the band would sign another major record deal in 1995 with East West Electra Records, which was also owned by Warner, the band released their fifth album titled Infrared Riding Hood. A month after the album came out, things went south once again for the band as the label's talent scout who signed Tad was promptly fired. The condition of their firing was that all of the Talent Scouts bands would be released from their contract with the label. It would also be around this time that Tad would undergo some lineup changes with several members leaving the group. And by 1998, the band would finally break up and each member would pursue their own musical projects. The band would temporarily reform in 2013 at a Sub Pop Records 25th anniversary show in July of that year in Seattle. So that does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Tad and the history of the band. And do you think they could have been much bigger had the string of bad luck not happened to them? Let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know if you guys have suggestions for future topics. 
And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you guys want to support my channel, simply watch another video or go check us out on Patreon for as low as $2 a month for some cool behind the scenes stuff. Take care.